So right now I'd like to talk about an undamped mass spring system whose dynamics occur, one, because of initial conditions, but two, because of a time-delayed external sinusoidal force. So what does this time-delayed part mean? This time-delayed part means that we're going to introduce the unit step function as a means to set this force up to wait some amount of moments in time. All right, so the key points that we want to remember here that the unit step function is a function given the name u. I look at u of t minus c, so that horizontally shifts the steps function, right, which we'll be able to see in the graph. But what is the step function actually going to do? Well, first, the step function is 0 for all t values that are less than c. And then the function is 1 for all t values that are greater than or equal to c. So the only really value, the only real values for this function are 0 and 1, and so it acts like a mathematical switch, which allows us to take this time period here for all moments before c units in time and treat that as being off, and then for all unit or times from c greater than or, or times greater than or equal to c, during this period, the function is on. Right? So that is the notion of a unit step function. And it's a switch that allows us to turn other functions on and off. Okay. And then we have the other points associated with this unit step function. We have its Laplace transform. Its Laplace transform is just the transform of a constant, and so a constant transforms to 1 over s, but that delayed constant, which is really what the step function is, has an exponential multiplier in Laplace space, and this tells us about time delay in Laplace space. Okay, now what we might want to do is take the step function and multiply it by another function so that it acts as the switch for this other function. And what we see is, again, the exponential multiplier giving a time delay or showing us a time delay in Laplace space. And then we get the Laplace transform of the function. Okay. I won't go into 3 and 4 too much. I just want to note that 3 here is good when you go from S's to T's, and we'll use it in a minute. And then 4 is good when you go from T's to S's. They are both step functions multiplying other functions, F. But in this case, this is already time shifted. This is not. And so, often, if you're going from t's to s's, you wouldn't expect to have a function set up to be time-shifted just right for you. And so, number four is the transform that we want to use when we just have no expectations on what the step function u of t minus c is multiplying. Now, when we take the forward transform from t's to s's, you'll notice that right here we have to introduce a time shift. T 
to transform. Okay. Whereas for number three, we have to do it on the way back.